Hello, I'm Tactical Pascal. Welcome to the channel. I hope this finds you all safe and well. In this video, I'm going to show you how to intercept an aircraft using basic intercept geometry while flying my plucky little F5. So I'm going to show you uh, basic figures what you need. You'll hear me asking AWACS for a lot of information and that's because I need the bearing so I can make a judgement on where the heading is going to go. So I'm just taking off, I'm scrambling heading north just to uh, get towards roughly where the target's coming inbound. So Overlord's there said clean. So he hasn't got any set, any aircraft of interest on his sensor. So I'm just going to roll out and fly north and I'll ask him again, bogey rope. Okay. We have Bra 307 for 90, 15,000 feet. So, 307 for 90. So it's saying from us, bearing 307 for 90. So if we go, there's 270, there's 360, there's 315. So it's saying it's somewhere over here. 307 for 90, 15,000 feet. Let me just get my little eraser out. We can get rid of that there. Get rid of that there. And that there. There we go. So, balls. <laughs> From us, bearing 307 for 90, at 15,000 feet, we have a contact. Now, unfortunately, in DCS, they don't do bra properly for the AWAC. So, we get bra, bearing, range, altitude. We need... Bra, proper bra, bearing range, altitude, aspect, or azimuth, depending on which air force you control from. So I need to know the target's heading. And then I can do all my intercept geometry. Now, how I do that in the game is I get me and I fly left a bit, right a bit, left a bit, right a bit. And then what I do is I judge if that bearing from me, if I'm here to the target, or here to the target, if that changes dramatic so if i go up here and then the bearing is going down there i know the target's moving if the bearing stays the same it means we're going to be on a collision heading so if we have a constant bearing but decreasing range it means we will have oh, we will have a collision so constant bearing so from me to him him to me me to him me, 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 him, him, you close and close and close, we'll have an actual collision. So I need to maneuver to figure out where that target is going. So back to the video. So the first thing I'm doing here is turning directly onto that bearing because if I turn on to 307 and it stays the same, it's job done. I don't need to maneuver much. But what I'm going to do here is just go past that a little bit and then get more call outs from the AWACS and see what's happening. A one degree change, not much. That was just due to man and maneuver. So I'm going to see what happens by keeping flying on this westerly heading. Again, just adjusting, like I said in the Photoshop, going left and right, seeing where the bearing goes to. So now we've done our manoeuvres, we can hear that it's still bearing 307 degrees. It's now 70 miles away and it's still at 15,000 and it's hot. So hot, normally between 0 and 20, I don't know what they use for DCS, but that says to me it's heading straight towards me. So I'm going to round 307 up to 310. So the bearing from me to him is 310. So the target... Uh, is heading straight towards me. Now, if I'm heading 307, uh, I'll round that up to 310. If I'm heading that way, he's heading directly towards me, then the reciprocal of 310 is, of course, uh, 
three zero. So we know now how we can start doing our geometry. So let me erase this so we've got space to maneuver. So if the let me do it in red so it's clear. So if our target heading is one three zero, the reciprocal is three one zero. The datum that is the bearing from me to the target. At the moment it's 307, but as you see, I immediately started to turn left to get a separation. So the datum is going to go up to 311, the ideal and the final heading. Now, what we mean by ideal and final is if I continue to fly straight towards the target, yes, I will intercept them, but it's not a good intercept because I'll be head on with the target. What I need to do is maneuver to give myself separation so that I can then turn in behind him. Now we do this so we can get about seven or eight nautical miles depending on, I don't know why I drew that side on, <laughs> seven or eight nautical miles uh, before we start our turn in behind. Now to do this we have geometry. So what we want to do is either plus 20 or minus 20 to the target's reciprocal. That's going to give us our ideal. Now, if the datum is bigger than the reciprocal, we add 20. So my ideal datum, so I want to change the datum from 311. I want to maneuver my fighter to make it 330. I then want to add another 20 to get my final heading, which is a collision heading that I go on to before I roll on to the reciprocal and then I bind. So basically my intercept is going to look like this from my fighter. Helps if I draw it properly. I'm going to go towards the target, get separation, turn in for a collision heading, go in the reciprocal, and then roll in behind the target. That's what I'm going to fly, that profile there. So what I need to do is to make 311 go up to 330. I need to turn left, and I'm going to do that by about 50 degrees. So my, ba my datum is 311, so I'm going to turn left onto 260. Now, I turned a little bit far there, I went on 2.4, so I just reverse right a little bit onto about 2.6.0. And then all I'm going to be doing now is asking for the bearing and range, bearing and range, bearing and range. And that's going to count down for me. It's going to count that datum as it goes up towards 3.3.0. I don't want to turn at 3.3.0 because that's too late. I want to turn a little bit before it. So I'm just going to ask continually, bra, 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 and I'll get bearing information and of course if the target maneuvers that bearing is going to change but for now we're just going to get info So the datum is now 311. It starts to go up. Get bogeyed up again. So 314. We've turned the correct direction. Our bearing is going, or rather our datum is going up towards the one we want of 330. So you heard the burners come on there, I'm just putting on a little bit of speed to make that uh, datum increase a little bit quicker. Again, my radar's off, I'm not even looking up towards the target, in fact there I go, it's over there somewhere but he's miles away. Don't need to worry about it, so more bogey dope. So 321, that's close to our turn of 330. So we're going to get ready in just a second to turn right onto our collision heading of 350. There we go, 4 degrees, we're turning now. So we've done our manoeuvre, we've flown over and then the bearing has changed from 311 up to 326 which is close to our 
turn point of 330. So what we're going to do now is turn onto our collision heading of 350. So we make the datum change to our ideal datum and then we turn onto our final heading. And this is going to give us a nice little triangle here. Let me do that in a different color. So we can see, no, I don't want a quickie. We can see here and here is about the same number of degrees. It should be about 20 degrees. The next step is from our final heading. When the range, let me write range equals about 25. All we're going to do is turn onto the reciprocal of the target. And then when that bearing gets to about 350 again, our final heading, we're going to start the final turn in behind. So we've started our right hand turn onto 350. That's going to put us on a collision heading and that bearing will stay the same towards the target. So we're on a collision heading towards it now. Again, we steady out. I'm looking at my height. I'm looking at my speed. I'm 5,000 feet below the target. I'll climb up in a little minute, but I want to make sure my speed stays about decimal eight, decimal eight five, something like that. So I'll boil it up again just to make sure nothing drastic's happened. So 327 or 35. So 35 miles, uh, we are about 10 miles away from turning it onto the reciprocal. Now the reciprocal heading is 310, so my next turn is going to be left 310. So I'm beginning a slow climb up towards the target. I don't want to go core level with it. I want to be slightly below so I can look up through my nice canopy to see it. So bog it up again. Watch that range kicking down. So 30 miles, almost time to turn. We don't want to turn at 25, we want to turn a little bit before it. So here we go. Turn and left onto the reciprocal at 310. And notice I've not looked for the target, I've not got my radar on, nothing happening. I'm just manoeuvring based on this geometry. So a nice gentle turn, probably a bit too gentle to be fair, and a roll out on at 310. And I notice in a second that I'm a little bit shallow just by the bearing, and that's through my experience as a GCI instructor. That I know I'm a little bit too shallow, so I'm going to come left a little bit in just a second. So just looking down at everything there, I'm just below 14,000, so I'm just over 1,000 feet below the target. Is it 22 miles away from me? And I'm now looking for the bearing of 350. So when it gets about 345, something like that, I'm going to turn right onto the target's heading of 130. And that's the final turn. That's going to be the rollout in behind. So, yeah, there's me noticing I'm a little bit too hot, so I turn a little bit left. Still waiting. We're just waiting on 350, and then we turn. I'm looking at the instruments deliberately, so I'm not looking for a target. I'm just going to trust my geometry. So, just listening out for this call. 345. That's close enough to our turn point. We'll begin a right hand turn. And now's the point we want to get our head up out of the cockpit. We're a thousand feet below the target, so it should be slightly above us on the horizon as we continue to turn. Tally one. On the nose now, crossing right to left. I'll just give a gentle roll there to correct my turn. I'd now be Judy for the GCI. And then I'm going to continue that roll out straight in behind. Now, at this point, as a pilot, you'd be relaying identify one TU22. That's it. Simple intercept geometry. All you need to know really is the target's heading and then you can judge if that bearing is changing relative to you and then you do plus or minus 20 for the target's heading for your lovely RDIF. Then we'll go and ID it as 1TU22, tail number 10. It is carrying bombs underneath. You try and signal to the crew, do all that good stuff. And then eventually you'd get the order to shadow, to engage or to perform various maneuvers to try and escort it away from your airspace. That's it. That's how you intercept an aircraft with basic 
collision geometry, the whole mission itself, um, from takeoff to actual intercepts, took about 12 minutes, something like that. This mission was really interesting to fly as a pilot instead of being the GCI, but using my own GCI and using me as the fighter. So I'd work at the target heading, reciprocal, ideal, final, all that good stuff, and then do the headings myself. It, it was quite simple, but again, that's only because I'm a GCI instructor and have been for about 17 years. If you do want to know more about GCI, hit me up with a message over at Tactical DCS. Come and join us. It'd be great to have you there. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Tactical Pascal, out!